we have super exciting session ahead because we are going to talk about the menopause and how Synergy can support you. Please, next slide. Quick reminder, always consult your doctor before using any nutritional products. Our products are not a substitute for a balanced diet and the content of this webinar has to be evaluated by the FDA and it's not intended to diagnose, treat, prevent or cure any disease. Next slide. Don't worry, I'm not the speaker today. We are super lucky to have Dr. Ballas from the Hughes Center with us. She will be explaining about the hormone balance offering practical tips and showing how our products can help. Without further ado, I will hand it over to Dr. Ballas. The stage is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Oh, my word. I'm seeing all these countries and now I just want to go travel. So <laughs> that is fun. So next slide and we'll start with how to get into our menopause symptoms. So I want to start with, let's get back to our root cause, because just like hormones, they're like our fingerprint. Everybody's is different. We all have different responses. There are some common denominators that we can look at, but doing all of the hormone replacement and all of the different types of therapeutics that are out there, it's very complicated. And even for myself as a practitioner with a full-time clinic, we have to assess everyone from a root cause. So let's jump into that so that we can make more of a difference in people's lives. Next slide. I think if you've gone through this, or even if you live with someone that's gone through this, you're going to know that these are very common symptoms, um, especially number one, probably on the list are the hot flashes. And you can be in snow and start having hot flashes. So they're just random sometimes, sometimes the mood swings, um, the cycles start getting irregular and sometimes they'll be closer together, then they'll start spreading out and that's going through that perimenopausal phase. And then the sleeping at night is always a big concern that a lot of women express to me. Okay, next slide. So, Everyone reacts differently. Next slide. So where do we start? Where do we start with helping mostly ourselves, um, all the females on the call, and, and then how do we help others? Hormones are these interesting little creatures that are all designed to work together. So if you're altering or you're lacking or deficient or excess in one, it affects all the others. So it's like this huge puzzle we're trying to figure out. So let's go back to where it all begins with the biological terrain. And I'll explain what biological terrain is in just a second. Okay, next. So I put some US statistics on here, which I think apply worldwide. Um, we have like 80% of women complain with PMS symptoms, okay? Um, uh, 20 to 50% have actually had a fibroid diagnosis, 80 to 90% experience perimenopausal symptoms and at younger and younger ages now. Um, breast cancer rates have risen. Um, by age 60, a third, most people will have a hysterectomy or, or a surgical procedure, a surgical menopause. Next. So this is a big issue and we hear about the different hormones, right? We hear about estrogen, we hear about progesterone, we hear about testosterone, even as women, the testosterone is important. So some of these have key items that they help to complete, like our bone building, our kidney support, our balancing our blood sugar. You know, there are a lot of key roles that each individual hormone place in the body, we want to look at them as a collective whole. So let's, let's jump in and let's simplify some of this. Okay. What causes some of the hormones to go out of balance? Well, our diet is a big one. Okay. So a lot of the sugar, um, the saturated fats, the processed foods, um, sometimes different prescription medication, um, this on top of all of our toxic environment can change how our hormone signaling occurs. Okay, next slide. 
So what are these disruptors? There, you see this whole list. We don't have to get into all of these. Just know that we pretty much live in a very toxic world that we're trying to combat. And sometimes even just bringing that back to neutral, we feel like we've accomplished something. So how do we stay ahead of the game with some of these disruptors that are affecting our hormones? Next. Insulin is even one of these hormone disruptors. So we all hear about, um, you know, your glucose levels or your triglycerides or your hemoglobin A1C. We have all of these markers to tell us what our insulin is doing. So we want to know insulin is actually working as an aging hormone. So the trans fats are in a lot of the processed carbohydrates can affect and elevate our insulin, which will throw the other hormones off. Next slide. So here are some things we want to consider. Okay, next slide. Here's our biological terrain. So what does all of this mean? Here's my analogy that I use with patients. If you have a smoke alarm going off, it's really loud and you just want the noise to go away, basically. So that's kind of how we look at symptoms. We just, we want the symptoms to go away. So we can put some duct tape on that, or we can throw something at it. And it might go away for a little while, but eventually that duct tape loses its stickiness, right? So then it, the noise comes back. If you have a smoke alarm going off, you have smoke. If you have smoke, you have a fire. If you have a fire, there's a little arsonist somewhere that started that fire. So let's find the arsonist. And instead of having this ripple out as negative effects, let's go change the biological terrain of how it's hosting all of this, of all the tissues, how they support everything, how the cells adapt to the environment and these chemical signals, including hormones as a chemical signal. And let's change the signals that are being sent out. So this can be a constant shift for this internal adjustment. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard of pH balancing. It's a constant shift. So how do we stay on top of this to work on that little arsonist that we minimize all the symptoms? Okay, next slide. Life balance. Yeah, good luck with this one, right? I know we all have so much going on. Um, there are some things that we can control in this, our dietary and supplemental factors, like what we're taking, right? Doing a plan of cleansing and then some building and then our, our core nutrients of maintaining. And we're gonna talk about all of those. And then changing your lifestyle and your diet. I know it's very hard to reduce stress in your lifestyle. Um, maybe if we move to another planet, maybe it won't be as stressful, but we need to work on stress management. And we can do that with some supplementation and lifestyle changes. Getting the right nutrients in, because how do you build a house if you don't have a good core foundation? It's not gonna be very stable. So we're gonna look at our nutrient supply with this too. Okay, next. So most people come in um, and they want a quick fix. You know, it's like they want a pill for pill, substitution. And that's not really how we work in natural health. So we want to educate them on, hey, you know, you got here, you got to this imbalance for a reason. So I've seen a lot of women go through menopausal without having symptoms, with the menopausal symptoms. So it can be done. So a lot of this depends on that biological terrain and on your lifestyle choices. So let's look at what changes are essential to get us to that balanced biological terrain and fix the root cause. Okay. Um, and here, this, I like this quote because unfortunately, most people would just rather live with old problems and new solutions. Change is hard. Change is hard for a lot of people to understand that, wow, if I go all the way back to my lifestyle choices and my, my dietary choices and my exercise choices, like I can make a difference in this, but sometimes that's too hard for them. So let's let's help them understand why this is so important. What are some of the stressors that, that create this menopausal chaos that we're looking at with a lot of those symptoms? Next slide. There's some major factors for women to pay attention to our bodies. Um, we're always putting others first. 
right? We are caregivers. We get that. And especially probably being in the natural health industry, you're even more of a caregiver because we, we want to help people. That's just our nature. So understanding where those stressors affect us and making time for ourselves. Uh, I just tell women sometimes 20 minutes. I don't care if you have to lock yourself in the bathroom, 20 minutes just to get some solitude, just that regeneration. Find ways for yourself doing a yoga class, you know, um, going to the gym, find a walk in nature, whatever appeals to you that you relate to that it brings your stress factors down. Then we're going to be able to balance the biological terrain easier. Okay, next slide. So here's our hormone hijackers. What causes these to go out of balance in the first place? Next these lovely little monsters called xenoestrogens, okay? Xeno mean foreign, foreign. They can go in and take up the parking spot like a big bus and move your little Fiat out of the way, right? They get priority because they're bigger and they get the parking spot. We don't want them parking in the wrong parking spot. There are so many chemicals. You're more fortunate in Europe that you have less chemicals than we do in the U.S. That, that is a bonus. You do seem to have a much cleaner food supply. Um, there are a lot of things that establish xenoestrogenic activity. And it it's like a, it's a little phantom. It, ha, it wears a mask and it pretends to be a natural hormone when it's not, Okay. So we have to identify these because, again, it's taking up the wrong parking spot and it has a key to the cell, but it tends to just break the lock instead of using a key. Okay. So where do these come from? Um, everywhere. Okay. So a lot of our meat and dairy industry, uh, pesticides on produce, our, our plastics, um, I just did a CEU, CEU training a few weeks ago, and we were talking about glyphosates and how lately, like even in an umbilical cord of a newborn baby, they're tracing these higher rates of glyph glyphosates um, and where they've had just exposure through the mom. So a lot of our kids are coming into the world with this. So as this new, you know, Gen Z and everything, we're probably going to start seeing earlier and earlier hormone imbalances. Um a lot of our skincare products, and again, you guys are so much more fortunate in Europe because you have blocked at least 1,100 more than we have in the U.S., which is great. Um, just plastic water bottles left in the sun, okay? All of that hormone pesticide residue, sometimes even in our water, um, microwaving, especially in plastic. So you can see the whole list here. There's a lot. So the bottom line is we're exposed to it all the time. How do we counteract this? How do we get them to not take up the wrong parking spot? Okay, next. We're going to work on the liver. Okay. The liver is so, so, so important in hormone health. The liver is going to control how the hormones get to their parking spot, how they become a usable form that's going to supersede the non-usable form, as in the xenoestrogen. So we use energy from the liver. There are a lot of pathways. There's seven pathways in the liver. I'm not going to go into all of those, but each of those different pathways play a key role to transport hormones, to get them on the bus, make sure they have a bus driver, make sure the bus has a GPS map to get it to the right location, and then dumping it off at the right cell. So it has a lot of roles that it plays with the function in our hormone health. So let's start there. That's our root cause. That's our biological terrain that we're going to focus on to start having better hormone balance. Okay. We counteract those negative estrogens via keeping the liver cleanse. There are other ways with progesterone creams and wild yams that you can work on that, but we really want to regulate our liver support and detox. Another thing that's important is increasing your dietary fiber, especially your soluble fiber during this process, because it's going to provide more buses, right? We're going to put those toxins 
on those buses with the fiber. It's going to bind with those and help to get it out of the body so you're not recycling it. Okay. Another is focusing on whole foods. So let's look at our liver health formula. This formula is amazing place to start. Okay. Next. This is our product label. Let's look at what's in here. So we want to nourish the liver. You know, everybody jumps into cleanse, cleanse, cleanse. That's great. We can dump a lot of toxins out, but they're going to get on the bus and they're going to ride around on the bus until we eventually release them. So we want herbs that support and nourish the liver during this toxic elimination. Okay, digestion, antioxidant defense. We're going to get into a whole protocol that you can get started on and you can do your 90 day program on it to start seeing a difference. So burdock is very well known for the liver um, as far as a detoxification agent. Turmeric is known for its anti-inflammatory properties. Gentian is a bitter, spirulina is nutritive, and then your dandelion root is also a bitter. That's working on how these toxins get released. So when we look at the liver and this role that it plays in detoxing, there's two phases. There's a phase one and a phase two. So what happens is that interacts with the kidneys. Our gut becomes part of this issue to help detoxify as well through our bowel movements. That's where the fiber comes in that it's so important. And our lymphatic system transports a lot of this to remove waste from the tissues. So all of these herbs in this formula support those systems. Okay, next slide. So what are some of the benefits other than just detoxing from these pathways? A lot of these herbs will also help tonify the liver. So when we say tonify, this is an herbal term um, and it helps build. So when we are strengthening, we think just like you would think of toning your muscle, we're toning the liver to help it work better, to do its functions better, to make it stronger. So we're going to give it the nutritional support that it needs to be able to see these hormones, make them available to the right cell, remove any of the things standing in the way like toxins so that they can work better. Once we start establishing that biological balance, that biological terrain, the cells start getting what they need. We also have to make sure we're putting in what they need as well. But this detox process moves all of those things out of the way that are roadblocks for our hormones getting where they need to be. Okay, next slide. So here's our favorite friend, right? Stress. Um, said no one ever. So <laughs> how do we know when we're out of balance? Um you know, we're constantly um, with the muscle tension. I always have a phrase that I say, we wear our shoulders as earrings, right? We start getting tense and tense and tense. So look at your muscle tension. We'll have um, stomach issues, gut disturbances. Um, start feeling tired. Like, why do I feel tired now? I've always done the same amount of stuff I'm doing. Um, some of it could be because of the sleep disturbances. We're not getting enough of that deep sleep. That in turn can lead to feeling nervous and uneasy and um, high blood pressure and mood changes and then cravings and overeating. So you can see how this cascades that once we're out of balance, it starts showing up in a lot of different ways. Okay. So what creates the stress? Um, us. <laughs> Um, we have external influencers. That's our, our physical health, our environment, our career, relationships, kids, schedules. And I'm going to add the clock on here because that one is my biggest stressor. So here's a cool, interesting thing is when you're running five minutes late, your body has the same biochemical response with stress that it does as if a bear were chasing you. It knows no difference. So you can see now by putting it in that relation, how we're constantly running under stress, that it becomes a chronic stress, that it's not just this adrenaline surge as we need it. We're constantly living in stress. Some of the internal, in, oh, can we go back? Sorry. 
some of the internal influencers that we have on this that we have more control over are our nutrition. Our nutrition, our lifestyle choices, the adrenals, our thyroid, hydration is a huge one. That emotional well-being of finding that 20 minutes to run away and just regroup and rejuvenate, you know, um, just deep breathing exercises even. Uh, being active and then working on our sleep cycle. Okay, next slide. All right, let's look at this ad adrenal influence on our energy here. Next slide. How does the adrenal work? Well, this adrenal liver, and we're going to include the hormones in that, are like this trifecta, okay? So we have this whole trifecta with the the how the adrenal and the stress can throw hormones off. So when we look at the adrenal relationship, it is controlling who gets on the bus, which hormones getting on the bus. And it also is that stress response. So there's, there's actually three in here. It's fight, flight, or freeze, because now we have that third one in there. And then we're getting that cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and that adrenaline surge that we feel. And when you come down off from that, then you just feel like you've hit the bottom, that brain fog, the, the feeling overworked and overwhelmed. Um, we, we can do short-term cortisol because we do need it for focused, but when we have it releasing all the time, like when you're just running late or under the normal schedule stresses and it gets that prolonged elevation and release, it actually depletes focus. So you can see how that works like on a bell curve. So cortisol imbalance disrupts our sleep, disrupts our concentration. Sometimes I think when our stress levels get high that we go into, oh my gosh, do I have like attention deficit, you know? And it is because of this fatigue, lack of motivation with this cortisol regulation. So that is the number one hormone in our body. So how do we work on that? Next slide. We're going to do some direct stress support. So adaptogens are going to help the body to adapt to stress by supporting these responses. So we're going to talk about some of our formulas that have adaptogens in them. And more importantly, how do we get them on the bus and get them delivered to the right bus stop? Okay. We do that by helping to regulate that cortisol, by managing the stress responses, by giving our body the nutrients it needs in order to do what it needs to do to protect the cell. Okay, next slide. So stress does affect progesterone, okay? Because what happens is our poor little adrenals, they're so small, but they do so much. And they use progesterone to try to produce cortisol. So then those levels with the stress load on the body get all out of balance. And then you get that constant cortisol, constant chronic stress demand that exhausts your adrenals. So that just causes this whole cascade of hormone disruption, of the fatigue, of the sleep disturbance, of the lack of focus, even having an effect on the hot flashes. Okay, so let's look at what we can help with this transportation system. The ProRG9, um, I actually did an in-house clinical on ProRG9 with some lab monitoring, and I can't even begin to tell you how amazing this product is and the effectiveness that we got on our study. The ProRG9 is going to be your supersonic Marvel DC comic heroin bus driver. So... It's going to transport everything that we need. It does play that crucial role. I'm sure we've all learned in nitric oxide. Um, learning what nitric oxide does by removing the oxidants and how it regulates the blood flow, it's like a traffic manager. It moves all of the traffic off the freeway so that everything can get through for your nutrient absorption, your oxygen delivery, and it's going to assist with your liver detoxing by helping those toxins not recycle. It's going to close those exits, so they have to go out one way. 
So why do we need more of it? Because this metabolic process is dependent on that nitric oxide. So you can see if you're taking things for bone health, that's fantastic. But what if you're just urinating them out? You know, then you have a very healthy toilet because they're not getting where they need to be. So if we're putting our supplements in and we're making these lifestyle changes and we're creating this awareness to do better, we want to make sure it's doing what we want it to do. So with this healthy blood flow and also the little the some of the vitamin C that's in here of how it aids the nervous system with stress too, the B6 and B12 are going to be really important to reduce any of the toxic side effects of like um, an inflammatory response. Um, so keeping this moving with this clear blood flow is going to be very important for us to make all of our nutrients work better, including our hormones of getting from point A to point B. Okay, next slide. This is just lovely science stuff. Um, sometimes I nerd out on it, but I will just give you the brief version, okay? That the polyphenols can up, upregulate this nitric oxide uh, synthase. It's this expression of how we get the benefits from the ProRG9. All right, next. Okay, here's another one we're going to work on. And this is a little bit more of a direct aid because in the whole process, we're going to be working on how we change our lifestyle choices to help with the stress, how we change our lifestyle choices to get rid of the toxins. And we're going to use some support and some direct aid for our sleep patterns. So we might just need that boost. So some of the benefits that we get with the sleep well, it has these amazing relaxants in it, like passion flower and hops and valerian. So not only do you get calmed down faster for that potential insomnia of not being able to fall asleep, but it helps with your sleep pattern that you have a restorative sleep. So you're going to feel better. If any of you have any of the smartwatches, which I don't really recommend sleeping with them all the time, but to do a little self-study for, you know, a week with it to see where your sleep patterns are and how much deep sleep you're getting. It's kind of fascinating. And then maybe do another one of take the sleep well and see if that doesn't create a benefit for it. So those are just some little things you can do to show yourself what's making a difference because to have this mental health balance and to have this hormone balance, we can't do any of it without good sleep patterns. Okay, next. So let's get back to balance. Let's increase greens in our foods. Okay. Cruciferous vegetables, a higher protein diet. I know some of us, um, and if you are vegan of doing your plant-based proteins, okay. Um, you can do your shakes. And getting that moderate exercise in. Most of the time, the exercise, yes, to build, to help us in a physical capacity, but it's also in that mental capacity that we get a little bit of that stress relief. So I will just share with you that at age 50, I started doing competitive figure skating and now I've been doing it for 10 years. I know that you, I know you can do math. So you added the age up, darn it. Um, it has been so much of a stress reliever because when I'm out on the ice, I can't think about all of the stress things because my main goal is to be vertical, right? I don't want to fall. <laughs> so in doing so, you get some of that adrenaline release and you get some of the stress out. So find your activity that brings you joy, that you're just like, oh, I can't wait to do this so that you can help with those stress cycles that may be affecting your sleep. Okay, next. Here's some foods that affect our hormone health. So here's your avoid list, right? The things that are high glycemic. So processed foods. Um, fortunately, you have access to more whole foods in Europe. I noticed when I was in Italy, I was just enamored with the food there of how fresh so that is a bonus. So get those changed, get the trans fats out, get the GMOs out. 
and get in a cleaner diet mode. It doesn't mean you have to go change everything out in your cupboard like tomorrow. Start making a conscious choice towards like one thing. Like I'm going to I'm going to get all the sugars out. I'm going to get next I'm going to get all the processed foods out. So just create a little to-do list and start making it something that you can achieve. Next this is a study showing how we just really don't eat well. So one in 20 Americans um, eat at least three servings of vegetables a day. So, and that number keeps declining. Um, so again, when you have access to fresher food, your body's going to want it. Next. So how are we gonna get the nutrients in? Because we all know like with soil conditions and things like that, that we're not getting the nutrients that we need. Um, for example, oh, can we, yeah, there we go. Thank you. So for example, like bananas, how many of those would you have to eat to actually get the right amount of potassium? And we just can't achieve that anymore. It becomes too sugary, too high caloric intake. So we look at a whole food blend. The performance grains should be like your multi-base. This is part of your core items. Uh, you've got the whole food blend in there. We've got digestive health items in there. You've got your fiber in there that's going to help. You've got an immune supporting blend. You've got your adaptogens for stress and then the nootropics for um, brain. So, and then we've got antioxidants to protect from all the oxidation and the toxins that we're dealing with and releasing. Next. So let's look at one of the adaptogens in there is Shizandra. This one's just a fun one. So it is like a powerhouse nutrient for stress and for the cell. So you go in and you put Shizandra in and it's going to help as an adaptogen. We call them a smart herb. If it's too high, it brings it down. If it's too low, it brings it up. So it's going to modulate. It is a very good modulator and how it helps the cell with energy supply and demand. Okay, next. Then we have one of our favorite for mitochondrial function, which just means for our cellular energy. Okay, and that is the green tea, which is in our greens. Okay, next. So what are we going to get out of this? There's so much here. I mean, I, I can't imagine putting any more in one formula. So just doing your perform your Pro 363 performance grains daily, you're going to get so many superfoods and so many vitamins and minerals. And then what are we doing? We are building that foundation to the house so that it's stable. We're building that core. So get on this for 90 days and see if you don't feel a difference. Next, here's some more benefits. I, I mean, we could probably put 30 more slides in with all the benefits of the Pro360. So this metabolism effect as well, when you start feeding your cells real foods, real nutrients, they stop craving all of the other junk. So I usually set it up that it takes 21 days to establish a habit. So see if in 21 days, start noticing and even journaling of how your cravings change once you're doing the Pro360 daily. Okay, next. So let's look at some structural integrity now, because we all know of how stress and inflammation and hormones can all affect and compromise our structural system, mostly in women, 78% in women. And our dietary choices play a major role in that because in choosing the wrong foods, you can create an acid in the body that's actually robbing your minerals, okay? And those symptoms are, are silent. We don't really notice them until it's too late with bone health. So let's get on top of this now so that we are looking at how our exercise works with it, our diet, um, actually the, and the high acidic diet that we just talked about. Okay, next. So here's just another quote I found because if dairy is such a great source of calcium, then how come countries with the highest incidence of osteoporosis like the US are the ones that consume the most dairy? 
So that is not our answer. We're going back to our biological terrain of changing what we're taking into the cell. So calcium gets bound to certain things that we can't use it. Okay, um, the phosphorus gets too high, which is another mineral, right? We don't have the enzymes to separate this, especially with the pasteurization and all of the alterations that are being made to our foods that contain calcium. So our dark leafy greens actually have the most amount of calcium. So let's go back to our Pro360 and let's start getting that in to support our structural health too. Next. Let's get to the core of what we're going to do with all of this. Okay, next. Omega-3. This is such an important part of our core nutrition. And we're not getting enough of it in our diet, okay, in our food choices. So we need the fish oils in order to support not only the heart and brain, but also the structural so when we look at this from the cold water fish with the EPA DHA, this is going to also support cognitive. And it's one of those supplements I tell people, like, you're probably not going to notice tomorrow taking it that you feel a difference. But, you know, in two or three years being on it, you're going to say, well, I'm really glad I've been taking that because you're going to have a lot less of your health disruptions than maybe some of the people in your friend circle are having. I love the omega-3 with Synergy because it does have that lemon oil in it. So you don't tend to get that, <laughs> that burping back up of that fish taste. So that is a bonus. I love this formula. Next. Collagen. Oh, my friend. I'm actually, I have collagen in my drink right now. Um, I, I love, I can't say enough things about the beneficial effects of collagen. I know we talk about it with skin and with beauty, okay? And our hair, skin, and our nails. We all love that part. We all love the hair growth and nails strengthening. But we also love it for our protein synthesis of helping with the aminos getting delivered to the cell and for the antioxidant activity in it. It also helps with those structural items with all of the connective tissue. Like if we didn't have connective tissue in our body, we would just be like this bag of bones, you know, like probably see a lot of those right now coming up with Halloween. We're in October right now. So just a bag of bones that wouldn't be held together. So our collagen is very essential for our flexibility and for our ability to do our exercise routine. Next. The mental and emotional impact. This is huge. So think about this. How do we talk to ourselves a lot of times? I think we're our own worst critic as women sometimes too that we're having these negative effects, like I'm not good enough, or I'm not doing enough, or I'm not the super mom. So our mental and emotional states affect our energy. They affect our health. They affect our biological terrain. They affect our core being. So start thinking about how you can shift of being very appreciative, of being grateful for being a female and having those feelings, no matter how small the influences are, it's going to affect you all the way down to your cellular core of how you talk to yourself, how you embrace yourself as a woman at this point in life. Find joy, find joy in being you, find something that brings you joy and then exuberate that through your speech, through your words that you say to yourself. You know, how many of us can really stand in front of the mirror and say, wow, I look beautiful today. No, we're our own worst critic. So start finding one small thing each day that you can be positive about with yourself and look at how that will impact the stress and impact your sleep disturbances, impact so many things in your life. Okay, next. Wow, I, I think that was super interesting what you told us today. Um, that was amazing. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions. So now we have a little bit of time to drop your questions into the chat and we have some time to, to answer it. I saw some questions before that uh, let me check. 
Uh, I have one about how many priorities do we need to take each day? And also another one that you can answer both about how many sleep wells. Okay, so just like we have this individual fingerprint with our hormones and our, our terrain and our nutrient needs, mm -hmm. we are very individual on our dosing as well. So my suggestion is to follow the label on the packaging to start there, okay? Um, it's there for a reason. So begin with that and then maybe seek out if you have someone that's a professional health consultant that can help you if you want to change dosing on that, go from there. Great. I see another one about, can we take liver health with Purify? Yes, that is a yes. Because if you're moving toxins out, and you're moving those channels, just watch for any negative impact of too loose of stool or maybe not feeling great. A lot of times when you get that, it's called a Herkimer response with your cleansing. Usually it'll pass in about 72 hours. Um, and if it's not, just back off just a little bit. You know, gauge your body. This is a really good time to learn to start listening to what your body's trying to tell you, especially during a cleanse. So maybe you just need to ease off a little bit. When you make those dietary changes, definitely do that while you're cleansing. Lots of hydration, lots of water, um, maybe with lemon, um, you know, maybe doing more of your Pro360 to help buffer some of those toxins. So just play it by ear and start listening to your body if you're doing a little bit overkill on the cleanse or not. That's perfect. I see another one that why it's best to use Synergy supplements instead of others. Oh, well, okay. We can say a lot about that. We can do a whole presentation on that. <laughs> um, so being part of the Hughes Center and looking at how we source ingredients and looking at how we are such sticklers on quality and what the purity of the ingredient is, that gives you a trust in this that we are going to all of these different areas and all of these different testing mechanisms to make sure that you are getting the highest and purest quality that's going into these formulas. That's great. About all the products that you mentioned today, uh, which one do you recommend for post-menopause? Um, all. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I so... I, I love the proarginine just for the energy and the oxygen delivery. I live at a very high altitude. I'm at 7,100 feet above sea level. And I really just do not recommend that anyone lives here without having a type of a nitric oxide supplement with your ProRG9. So it's, it's essential, especially at higher altitudes. In order to work with that menopausal situation. And if you are having those symptoms, go back and look at what we said. Let's just simplify some of the key takeaways. Okay. Get the toxins out, get the nutrients in. You're going to support your nutrient intake with your Pro360, getting all of those nutrients delivered with the ProRG9. I would highly recommend just going ahead and mixing your collagen in with that. It could just be this like super powered drink. Get all of that in with the dietary changes and then adjust. Do you need something maybe with a little inflammatory um, acknowledgement with your omega? Do you need a little bit of help with the sleep? Um, where are your stress levels? You know, you've got all your adaptogens in your Pro360. So this can become your complete daily Pro core packet with the Pro360, your Pro Arginine, not Pro RG9, your omegas, okay, and with doing some of the collagen. So that's kind of why I went in and did this. The liver cleanse, that's gonna be something you do sporadically. Maybe do it for 30 days. Then go in and build, okay? Go in and do extra on your Pro360, your arginine, your omega, your collagen. Then maybe go back to the cleanse again after doing 30 days on some building stuff. Then go back to another 30 days of cleansing and kind of alternate that back and forth. And that way you're going to get your maximum potential to balance out that cellular terrain and support the adrenals so that you're going to see that ripple effect of not having the symptoms. We're not going after the symptoms. That's 
It's like a dog chasing a car. What do we do with it if we catch it, right? We want to change why the symptoms are occurring. And that goes back to putting these core nutrients in. Great. I see another one. Um, if you have to choose only one of the six products, which one do you recommend? My gosh, why are these questions so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I would have to go with the Pro 360 grains because we're not getting the nutrients that we need in our diet. And, and I am speaking from a North American standpoint. You know, if you're getting more of a nutrient in a very diverse rainbow colored diet and clean organic proteins, you know, um, then you might want to use the Pro RG9 to help with the delivery of those. But I just see so many people that are nutrient deficient that I'm always going to start on the Pro 360. That's perfect. So I don't know if you have any more questions or if there was some kind of pending. Uh, let me check. No, I think that's that's all. So thank you so much for joining us Yay. today. It was super, super nice to, to have everyone here. And we hope you found the webinar helpful and also super informative. Have a great day, everyone. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.